So in case you haven't heard, OpenAI just released Sora, which is a text to video AI tool. Now this technology is pretty incredible and it's also even more incredible when you consider how much this technology has moved since like even the last year, but definitely like over the last five years. Personally, I think artificial intelligence is gonna eliminate completely the need for stock video. It's already in a way done that for stock photography. I mean, using tools like Midjourney uh, or some of the other text to image tools uh, using AI has been pretty incredible. I know for my work, a lot of times now, instead of bothering to look for a specific image on stock photo websites, uh, I just go right into Midjourney. In case you don't know how this works, it's fairly simple. You pretty much put in a text prompt telling uh, AI what kind of image, or in this case, what kind of video you want to generate. And that's it. The AI does the rest for you. So let's look at a few examples here that OpenAI released using their new Sora tool. Watching a shot like this kind of blows my mind, just in the sense of like the fact that the AI is able to figure out how the volumetrics of like the smoke and then the, the you know, the snow here is behaving how the fur on these mammoths is behaving and just you know just in general how the mammoths are actually walking all these little details down to like the way that the snow looks the, the trees behind them the mountains i mean it looks for the real you also got to consider that if you wanted to create a shot like this yourself using let's say 3d animation and some live you know let's say stuck up footage first it would be very time consuming like just to get that live action shot of the mountains and the forest I mean, you'd really have to travel to that location, obviously, and, and get the shots. But then to actually add all the digital elements of the volumetrics and then the, the, the mammoths, like just to model those mammoths, texture them, you know, assimilate the fur, and then also simulating and, and compositing all those little details of how the mammoth kind of step on the snow. We're talking about like months of work for just a team of two people. So the fact that now just one person without any cameras or any other special software just using this one tool uh, can just put in a bunch of text and generate photo real video like this is again i mean it's it's pretty mind-boggling now as of the current release of sora there are limitations the biggest one is the time length basically of your clip so you can generate up to one minute clips now i'm assuming as a filmmaker that we'll be able to create basically multiple prompts and this way multiple shots that then we can edit together uh, even though right now, actually, Sora can also create an, a sort of an edited sequence for you, meaning it will create different angles and then those shots will actually match each other. But again, it's only up to one minute. And also, as of right now, Sora is not available to, to the public. Uh, it is a closed tool, still in beta, basically testing. So here, for example, is a sequence. So again, it has multiple shots uh, that are kind of matching each other. And, and again, uh, the AI technology was able to kind of create shots that match together and that edit together. Now, by the way, if you want to look at these examples, just go to openai.com slash Sora. And then uh, if here you'll be able to see on the bottom pretty much what prompt was put in there to create uh, this clip, for example. So in the case of this sequence, they just literally typed in uh, this prompt, a movie trailer featuring the adventures of the 30 year old spaceman wearing a red wool knitted motorcycle helmet, blue sky, salt desert cinematic style shot on 35 millimeter film with vivid colors and yeah i mean ai pretty much fulfilled exactly that prompt so let's look at another example so this is your sort of typical i would say uh drone shot for like stock footage that you, you'd be getting and again if you're somebody who relies on making money doing stock footage especially like you know drone shots uh, you know, you might want to think about switching your, your the careers because outside of a very few and very particular shots that, for example, contain like a known actor or, or your, your actor, let's say, from a film or like a specific location or set, uh, outside of that, if you're just going to be looking to get like a generic shot of, like in this case, of a coast or maybe mountains or something like that, again, AI will be able to recreate that for you. The technology is pretty much here, and it's definitely, I would say, in most cases, able to replace already all of that work. Now, of course, this tool doesn't just create photo real videos. You can also create very sort of stylized, like in this case, we have a, a, this animated shot, and it says, you know, the prompt for it, it says, animated scene fe features a close-up of a short, fluffy monster kneeling before a melting red candle, and then a few other details here to kind of uh, again direct the uh, the ai technology and it's yeah it's a you know it looks i would say almost like pixar quality there are some little weird things about it still but it definitely like for example if you wanted to create an animated film 
Uh, and then, you know, with this technology, all you really need is a good idea for a story. And now you don't need all this basically team of people to be able to create artwork for you, then build 3D assets, texturing, rigging, all that stuff that basically animation takes up time. Uh, and then and then again, and then the whole process of rendering it, lighting, all that stuff, compositing. So right now with this simple tool in a way, anybody can create a, an animated film. Like this shot is pretty cool example of how, how stylized you can get. So the prompt for it, it says uh, a generously rendered paper craft world of a coral reef rife with a colorful fish and sea creatures. And this also will allow, I think, a lot more experimentation because like, for example, back in the day, to be able to develop a sequence like this for a commercial, let's say, or something, uh, you'd still have to do all this artwork, kind of seeing, sort of imagining how the final product is going to be, and then, you know, before you get all the approvals for the budget and everything, and then you start your production. And then this way you can let quicker uh, pitch it and visualize it to potential investors. Like, for example, this shot of the bird, I mean, just the way that the feathers, like the dynamics, and everything, I mean, like the reflection in the eye, it's pretty incredible. <laughs> Another really cool example that they released is here, which the prompt uh, says, a stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street filled with warm glowing neon animated uh, city signage, and then, you know, so on, all these other details of like the color of her lipstick and things like that. Now, again, from a first glance, it looks like real video and it's actually pretty incredible, like how, how much it's able to generate, like even the reflections in her glasses, or, for example, that wet street with the reflections of the lights and all that stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. It looks like, a, at a first glance, I think this looks totally photoreal. Now, when you, again, when you play it over and over and you start analyzing it, you'll notice that sometimes it looks like her feet are sort of, like you'll notice here, the feet are sort of sliding sideways. I also notice sometimes the reflections seem like they're at a lower frame rate than the actual video. Um, so yeah, it's still not 100% there, but again, guys, like <laughs> this technology, I mean, it's amazing to me just how fast the technology has developed, uh, but also like just how simple now it is to be able to create shots like these. Like in this shot, again, you can see how the feet are sort of weird, kind of sliding there. It doesn't seem like they're planted firmly on the ground, but I mean, otherwise it's pretty incredible. Again, considering the fact that you're you're talking about AI generating like the, the details and complexities of how all the dynamics, how the ears are flapping, the fur, how it's moving, all that stuff. So now uh, one thing I wanted to sort of bring to your attention is that like when you're watching a lot of those AI generated videos, the weird thing, and I noticed the same thing happening with Midjourney is things with hands or fingers, like most, more specifically. Like in this case, it kind of works, except you'll notice there, like where she brings her right hand down, it's something weird with like the fingers are kind of blending. Um, and also just the way the motion of the hands is kind of weird. Like in all these videos, whenever you see people's hands, either the fingers, either there's more fingers or less fingers than they're supposed to be. And also just the motion of the hands is kind of still very weird. So I don't know why, it seems like AI in general is having problems with hands. <laughs> Go figure. Out of all the things it can create, it can't create hands uh, perfectly. Like here again, another test they did with uh, somebody's suggested prompt of two golden retrievers podcasting on top of a mountain. And, and yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it sort of looks like it, right? Uh, it definitely looks for real. I mean, it just looks weird having two dogs with headphones and all that stuff, but, but it does look for real. Oh, here's another example. Somebody suggested a half duck, half dragon flies through a beautiful sunset with a hamster dressed in an adventure gear on its back. Now, in this case, I would say, I mean, it, it generated the image of that half duck, half thing, and then the hamster. Very well, nice background, but it looks like it's flying backwards, right? And also the wings, like they don't really look like they're really flapping. So something's like the motion's not quite there. In this example, it's both, again, incredible, like how the detail of the dirt and all the stuff as these archaeologists are pulling out this plastic chair, how it basically is able to simulate that, yet at the same time, how it's having problems with, like, just the basic shape and the dynamics here of this chair, like this just chair just seems to go on its own, and it's just weird, like, it almost looks like, I don't know, you're, you're tripping on, on acid or something. <laughs> 
Or here's another example where it's just, again, these like wolves, uh, pups are kind of merging and duplicating and they seem to be kind of passing through each other. It's just a whole big mess. Now, here's an example of how sort of it can capture and simulate the details of a human being. And I think because we look at human faces all day, uh, we're, we're very quick at spotting that, you know, when something looks fake. And this shot, I would say, is like 90% or maybe 99% there. Like definitely it, it, the, all the details of the hair and all that stuff, it captures the really nice lighting. I don't know, there's just something about the motion of this, this man. I don't know whether it's the eyes or something. Something just seems like there's no life there. Now, for example, here, a close-up of this eye. Like, I swear, if somebody didn't tell me this is AI, I would think it's a real full video of, of uh, somebody's eye. I mean, the details of like just how the eyelashes are, the, the little pattern of the skin, it, it's pretty incredible. This is really cute. This is, this is a Zen garden gnome. And it's just, again, I mean, it looks like it's like the photoreal reflections and the way he moves and everything. Very cool. Now a nature shot like this, I mean, it looks totally believable to me. There's no glitches, nothing weird about it. It's like in this case, it's octopus with the crab fighting. I mean, it's, it looks for real to me. <laughs> now this shot here of this Nigerian sort of a town square and like people sitting, I mean, this looks pretty cool. It has obviously problems there with like this fine pattern of the shirt, but like otherwise it looks like the cinematic shot now of the city and the way the camera kind of repositions and stuff. Yeah, I mean, again, it's incredible. I know I'm saying incredible a lot in this video. Here's another really cool example of like this old, I think it's like 1800, supposed to be village. Uh, and it's, again, it's, it's pretty cool. Like it is able to recreate the sort of how a town back in the day would have looked like down to with all the little details of like the stream, the, the vegetation, the way the buildings looked. Now, when you think about like just the implications of this technology, especially as it gets, you know, even better with time, uh, it means that, I mean, pretty much anybody will be able to create a video footage of historical events that never happened or, or, or things that basically, or maybe even not historical, even, you know, like right now, like, I don't know, a politician, or maybe you want to smear somebody some, uh, you could again, create video that makes it look like they did something that they didn't actually do. Now, I'm guessing that's where sort of, you know, OpenAI and the guys there that are working, are, are, or at least I'm hoping that's what they're working on, is creating some limitations so that this technology can be used for that. Definitely, like, like again, because if you think about it, this could be very easily used uh, by the media organizations to sway, you know, whether it's like political outcomes or just sway public opinion on any topic by creating video proof of things that never actually happened. And, and that is something that definitely you gotta be, you know, like the people who are working on these tools really have to be aware of that, that while it, this technology is really cool and exciting right now, and for somebody like me, a filmmaker, I mean, I'm loving this stuff. It means that my job will be easier. I don't think as a storyteller, my job will be necessarily replaced. And I almost imagine like in the future as a director, uh, I, I'll be basically just sitting at a computer and instead of writing a script and then afterwards, you know, having to worry about, you know, breaking down the script, getting financing for it, then going and shooting all those shots, editing it, doing effects, all that stuff. I can literally just write a script and in real time have that script be generated by AI. So that is pretty cool because again, it means that any of us, as long as we have story ideas, we can create uh, really cool content, really cool stories, films, whatever it is they want to create. So for the creative aspect of it, I'm really excited for it. But for like media organizations or, or basically for propaganda out there, that's the sort of the, the worrisome you know, aspect, I would, I would say, of this technology. But either way, whether you like it or not, it's here and this technology is going to get better. So uh, I, I would love to hear, guys, your opinion of what do you think of this technology, just even from like the technical aspect, what do you think it, it's really good at and where it's really still failing? Uh, so definitely go out there to their website or go on Twitter and kind of just check out all those, um, you know, the posts that people are doing. But also the sort of broader implications of like, like I said, using it as a creative tool or versus propaganda. Anyways, that's it for this video. My name is Tom Antos and as always, uh, you can find out more info about all the things that I post filmmaking related on my website at TomAntosFilms.com. And if you want to see more videos like this, then definitely subscribe and turn on the notifications.